Even if he is active, Jones may not be given enough opportunities to contribute in a major way, but don't expect too much if he plays on Sunday. But first, I would like to say that if you, like me, are a fanatical supporter of the Kansas City Chiefs, subscribe to the channel because I will always bring you daily news about the best team in the NFL, our beloved Chiefs. The Ronald Jones era with the Kansas City Chiefs has taken some interesting turns over the past several months. Back in March when the former Tampa Bay Buccaneers standout signed with Kansas City, he was coming off a semi-productive tenure covering the span of his rookie contract. The 25-year-old inked a one-year deal worth $1.5 million that has the potential to grow significantly higher via incentives. At the time, it appeared quite possible that the Chiefs brought in some true competition for incumbent starter Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. Jones was viewed by many as the second half of a potential one-two punch in the backfield. In this year's NFL draft, general manager Brett Veach added Isaiah Pacheco into the fold. During the summer, he re-signed Jarek McKinnon to a one-year deal. Once training camp got going and the skill sets of the running back room became evident, Jones was suddenly the odd man out. Thus far in the 2022 campaign, he's been a healthy scratch on a weekly basis and even hinted at presumably wanting to part ways with the Chiefs back in late October. In a matter of months, he went from someone who could be a part of the solution to someone who was a mere afterthought. With Edward Soler now on the injured reserve list with a high ankle sprain, though, the Chiefs need a third running back. Their Week 12 matchup against the Los Angeles Rams is quickly approaching, and Jones makes sense to elevate to the game day roster for the outing. When asked about those chances this week, head coach Andy Reid was optimistic. If a legitimate chance turns into an active designation by Sunday afternoon, Jones could be in line to receive his first snaps of the season. With that said, given the current state of affairs above him on the depth chart, expecting Jones to do too much could prove to be an erroneous decision. Here's how the Chiefs have implemented the running back with the third most snaps in each game this season. Week 1, Pacheco, 16 snaps, 12 carries, 0 targets. Week 2, Pacheco, 5 snaps, 2 carries, 0 targets. Week 3, Pacheco, 5 snaps, 3 carries, 0 targets. Week 4, Pacheco, 17 snaps, 11 carries, 0 targets. Week 5, Pacheco, 2 snaps, 1 carry, 0 targets. Week 6, Pacheco, 10 snaps, 2 carries, 2 targets. Week 7, Edward Solaire, 17 snaps, 6 carries, 1 target. Week 9, Edward Solaire, 17 snaps, 4 carries, 2 targets. Week 10, Edward Solaire, 4 snaps, 0 carries, 2 targets. Week 11, Edward Solaire, 5 snaps, 2 carries, 0 targets before getting injured. Every week is different, but that's an average of about 10 snaps, for carries, and less than 1 target per game. Outside of a week 1 blowout that saw Pacheco get highlighted in the fourth quarter and another anomaly or two elsewhere, the Chiefs simply don't go to the third man at running back very often. The recent dynamic of Pacheco and McKinnon must also be taken into account here. Pacheco is the clear starter and had his first career 100-yard rushing performance last week, so Reed and offensive coordinator Eric Bayaniami likely won't shy away from giving him either the same or more opportunities in Week 12. On early downs, he's the man for the job. McKinnon is the club's preferred choice on third downs, as his pass-blocking and pass-catching abilities are the best on the team. Jones struggles in both of those areas, so heavy third-down snaps are a no-go for him. Is it possible that Kansas City gives Jones some first or second down reps in order to keep Pacheco fresh? Absolutely, but he probably won't get a heavy workload pending a blowout or injury. The fifth-year running back is far from a bad player, despite what certain parts of Twitter will argue, but he is a limited one whose shortcomings led to him getting surpassed on the depth chart earlier this year. Even if he receives an opportunity to showcase his talents this week or over the next few weeks, he'll be a complementary piece rather than a driving force. The Chiefs won't interrupt a good thing in their backfield. We have reached the end of another video. Check if you subscribed to the channel and left a like on the video. Until the next news.